coming to you from the Grassy Valley Stage Pulpit in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are an outreach ministry of Grassy Valley Baptist Church, and we're located on the corner of Lovell Road and Kingston Pike. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Kirk. And I'm Richard Britton, and we welcome you to another episode of The Word at GV. Well, The Word at GV today is encouragement. Imagine that. We're going to have an encouraging word today. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Hopefully all these words that we have are encouraging, but this one is about the word encouragement particularly. Uh, so we're going to define it. Um, and the definition of encouragement is the act of encouraging, duh, <laughs> or the state of being encouraged or something that encourages. Well, that didn't tell me anything. <laughs> so I went a little bit further and I went into the etymology of encouragement. Good. Okay, Good. which is the study of words. And in the 1560s, it's from encourage plus meant or from the French encouragement. The first known use of encouragement was in 1549. Hmm. So I kind of had to round hmm. this up and try to put it into some my own words of what I felt encouragement was. So my definition is something which alters the state of mind to excitement, oh. uplifting, stimulate, and motivate. Now I can't take full credit for that because I actually went back and I looked for uh, words of... Um, Synonyms? And Synonyms to encouragement. And okay. that's where I kind of came up with that definition. I really like the study of synonyms because it really expounds. Yeah. It helps you understand more clearly what, what the word means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. today we've got three different scriptures, mm -hmm. right, that we're going to talk about. Yeah. And then the last one is the one that I'm kind of bringing to the table. But let me give you all four scriptures quickly here. And I'll put them up across the screen, but uh, we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 mm -hmm. through 11. Yes. We're going to be in Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Uh, I'm also going to go into 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8. I think we need to end it with that and talk about uh, how Paul encouraged the Christian ministry in the in Corinth. Yes. Um, and I'll give you some background and give our folks some background about that because um, it, it'll make sense when we start talking about it. But anyway, okay. um, so 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11. Do you want me to read that? Yes. Well, I don't have verse 9. So okay. go, if you don't care, I'm going to let you. All right. <laughs> These are reasons to have an uplifted uh, uh, change in our mind here. Okay. Verse, verse 9, for God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, living or dead, right. we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. Yeah, I love that word, therefore. Therefore. It, it, it kind of like, it substantiates what he has said in previous verses. It's like, so in other words, or the sum of what I've just said is therefore this. Yes. And so that word encourage one another and build up one another just as you are doing, also doing. And Paul loved this church. Yes. He, it was like his, mm. it, it mm. was the faith church. If yes. You had to give it a word. He absolutely loved to use them as examples of what faith is because of all that adversity that they had, mm -hmm. they were in the upper uh, northern region of the Black Sea area. Yes. And they were right on the border of the um, Roman Empire. Okay. And so they were influenced by all kinds of oh. issues, yes. and, but yet they were going out and preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. And Paul used them as a perfect example. 
And so when he says, therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you are also doing, mm -hmm. he was encouraging them to continue to be encouraged. Yes, they had uh, learned the good news uh, concerning Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and they understood our former way of life that we had engaged in wholeheartedly, basically a party lifestyle. Right. And they worshiped uh, gods that were not really gods at all. Mm -hmm. And they engaged in all kinds of immorality and uh, uh, forbidden practices. They, that, that was their life. But then they've, they've come to know that we're not destined for God's wrath. As a matter of fact, he's gonna transform us and conform us to the image of Christ. So we have every reason to be excited now and to be encouraged. Yeah. And we want everyone else to know this. And uh, Paul is, is saying, good. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're encouraged at the good news and now share that with others and encourage them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that's, uh, mm. yeah, that's like the, the best definition of encouragement. Um, mm. and, and he was encouraging uh, his believers or the, mm. uh, you know, build up one another mm -hmm. is what I keyed in on when you were, mm. you know, going mm. over that verse that we build one another up. That's so true. Build each other up to stay encouraged because, you know, we mm. have, we have people coming in the ch church that get discouraged. They may not show it, mm -hmm. but you can recognize discouragement oh, yeah. and we, we need to encourage them to continue in the faith and build them up so that they go out and yeah. spread the gospel and continue. If, if a person is really discouraged, and, it, and it's easy sure. to, get, to get discouraged in this sure. world, if you focus on things in this world or how wrong it seems and mm -hmm. the hurts of this world, it's easy to get discouraged. And, and people that are attending church every Sunday may have had a rough week. Oh, yeah. So when we gather, we can. Imagine uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's good when uh, we can testify to each other about God's kindness towards us. Yeah. And, and we get our attention focused a little bit further down the road into eternity. And uh, we won't be experiencing the wrath of God. Right. As a matter of fact, he has a glorious future for those that are his. Right. And focus on that. Then you can. Uh, you can change that frown into a smile. Right. Well, we're going to talk about next in Hebrews 10, 24 mm -hmm. through 25, um, mm -hmm. how we can encourage, I guess, well, might be a way of doing it. But let me, let me read uh, Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Mm-hmm not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Mm. So, you know, we may never see the end of time in our lifetime, mm -hmm. or it could come tomorrow. <laughs> but as we see the day drawing near, and to me, I'm thinking as, as I draw nearer to my death, you know, yeah. as this world is, we see in the news, the world falling apart. And of course, I know we're, we're doing this a few months, this episode a few months in advance. So we don't have a crystal ball to look in the future to see what mm. November is going to look like. But, um, you know, there's always things going on in this world that are discouraging. But, you know, uh, you know, the, the writer is telling us here that we need to be encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near, right? I mean, yes. believers should actually consider how to motivate and inspire one another towards love and good works. Yes, Christ is coming back. Right. And what we do matters. Right. What we do every day counts. Um, uh, in Jeremiah, he says he examines our minds and he, uh, he looks into our hearts deeply and and he's going to reward us according to the deeds, the, the works we've done. And if we remember that, we can be about those works, actively pursuing, uh, encouraging others. And this, you know, if I'm busy helping somebody, mm -hmm. I'm not discouraged. Yeah. When I'm actively helping somebody, it encourages me. And right. maybe they'll receive some encouragement out of it as well. So uh, God understands human the human mindset. He knows if we're engaged in good works, 
it's going to make us feel better too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, then our uh, third uh, scripture reference here is Second Corinthians one three through four, and I'll I'll go ahead and read that. But okay. blessed be the God and Father. And I'm going to read slow because this is this is can be hard oh, to follow. Yeah. So let me see if my reading skills are pretty good. I'm going to okay. put my glasses on for this. <laughs> one. Um, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, mm. <laughs> who comforts us in all our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Yes. Now that's yeah. a mouthful, buddy. Oh, I'm there's. Just <laughs> but <laughs> he, he's he's honoring God uh, as God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, and and uh, he's describing him as the Father of mercies, and it, it's 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 good to know that that's God's essential nature. He right. is merciful. Right. He he wants to show mercy to us, and I'm relieved at that. I'm really thankful. Right. That he he actually wants to be merciful, and uh, uh, it's just his nature to come and help us when we're having a time of need. He wants to help, and and uh, through all these adversities that we go through, right. he's he's training us to just trust him. Right. Trust in him. And when we can receive that comfort from God, we turn around and can extend that to others. Yes. And it's a source of encouragement. Um, you know, I sometimes use the word affirmation mm -hmm. uh, that, hey, I know that's from God. You, you are being so in control of your emotions and, you know, you're being a rock for me right now as I'm going through this tribulation. Mm -hmm. That's only from God, you know. That's it. And it gives you the, the, the uh, encouragement yes. that... God is working through somebody to comfort you. Oh, that's remarkable when you notice that, when you recognize it. Yeah. Uh, God can comfort you personally, or he can work through your brother or sister in Christ to encourage he can, you. He can work through cough drops, can he? Yes, he can. <laughs> uh, at the, at the, yes, I was <laughs> greatly encouraged when a man came through the receiving line. We were receiving friends yeah. at my mom's funeral. And a man came and gave me two cough drops. It was comfort. A very comforting. It, it comforted your throat. Oh, yeah. You probably weren't even thinking anything about that. <sighs> Not but God all. came along and yeah. gave you the cough drops. And we know that was from God. Yes. That had to be from God. <laughs> I needed those cough drops at that particular time, and God met that need. I'm just <laughs> telling you, he's <coughs> so good. <laughs> all right, so um, let's finish up and uh, with... Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5, oh. 1 through 8. And, you know, I was, I was going to go into this at some length, but I would encourage everyone out there, uh, I'm going to hit the highlights and I'm going to do a lot of paraphrasing and things like that, mm -hmm. but I would encourage people to go back uh, through 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8, because this is where Paul's writing the letter of encouragement of, of the Christian ministry. And mm -hmm. we all don't think of, you know, the minister, the pastor in the church. You are the Christian ministry. Mm -hmm. And Paul is trying to encourage the Corinthian church. And, of course, if you I'm just going to give you a little bit of context to this. But the Corinthian church battles against or battled against the same thing we battle against today. Um, in their time, they battled against Hellenism, which was mm -hmm. very popular in that time, hmm. and it's a practice primarily centered around polytheistic and animistic worship. In other words, worshiping multiple gods, mm -hmm. or, you know, like we really have a hard time sometimes worshiping God as three persons, and we have a tendency to separate them into, um, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Well, we know that's the three persons that make up the Trinity, the mm -hmm. one triune God. Mm -hmm. And the concept is hard to grasp. And sometimes we separate them, you know, and mm -hmm. that can 
have a tendency to lead to polytheism. So we need oh. to be careful with that. But anyway, that's what the, they were going through. Uh, devotees worship the Greek gods, which are the Olympians, the divinities and spirits of nature, such hmm. as nymphs. Underworld deities like uh, Chthonic gods and heroes, uh, both physical and spiritual ancestors are greatly honored. Uh, the concept of Hellenistic religion as a late form of ancient Greek religion covers any of the various systems of beliefs and practices of the people who lived under the influence of ancient Greek culture during the Hellenistic period and the Roman Empire. Well, my point here is, in saying all that, is that our culture is influenced by its people. And sometimes people are wrong. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so imagine that. Mm -hmm. So Paul is encouraging the believers in Corinth, hey, if you've strayed, if you're giving into that culture, if you're you know, not doing what's, what's proper and right. He's, he's, he's giving the Corinthian people encouragement, and I'm going to tell you how. So according to Paul, in 2 Corinthians 5, Paul continued to give reasons why we need not lose heart. Mm -hmm. Now understand their culture. We live in the same similar culture today. <laughs> Paul's encouraging him, and I'm going to give you three points of what Paul encouraged, how he encouraged him. The mm -hmm. themes of life in the midst of death and glory following as a result of present, present suffering are also continued in this passage. What about the believer who dies before he or she has followed God faithfully for very long? Mm -hmm. Will such a person experience no glory in the future? Well... Paul explained that there's three bases for comfort or encouragement in such a case. First, in verses uh, 1 through 4, or 1 through 3, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 3, all Christians who die will receive an immortal body. Mm. <laughs> this is by itself a substantial gift of glory. Oh, I mean, wow. if we receive an immortal body, <laughs> this, this shell that we live in, mm -hmm. we know is dying. And you look in the casket and you see an empty shell. There's no life in it whatsoever. But our spirit is going to indwell in an immortal body. That's the promise of God yes. if we're Christian. <laughs> Second, all Christians, including those who die soon after becoming believers presently possess the Holy Spirit, who is God's pledge of future complete glorification. So those are verses 4 through 6. And what Paul is stating here is, is that once we're saved, right? Holy Spirit indwells us immediately. Once mm. our heart is softened and we receive God's grace of the Holy Spirit. And that's the good news, guys. I mean, get excited about <laughs> yeah. that. That, you know, even though, even if we've been a Christian for a day, it doesn't make any difference. He's going to give us the glorification. Yeah. Third aspect of encouragement is, is that death begins a new phase of existence. I love this one. Mm. This is verses 7 and 8. For all believers that will be far superior to what we experience now. He gives us hope and encouragement of what we have to look forward to. Yes. And I'm going to read those two verses. Okay. Verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be put at home with the Lord. How could you not be encouraged by those three things that, and it, it, you know, for Christians that might be out there who have lost a, a, a loved one and shaken their fist at God and ask why, you know, questioning God is not a bad thing. You know, we, we, we should question God. Job did. 
Yes, he can handle it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But continue in faith. Be encouraged that God is on your side. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and the Spirit of the Lord has come to dwell within you, mm -hmm. you or no one else is going to shake you out of his hands. Now, does that mean we can stray from him? Well, Absolutely. We, yes, we can stray. We can stray. Yeah, yeah. And, but be encouraged that he will always, if you're a child of his, that he will accept you back. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, work your salvation and glorification out. So, you know, I'm really encouraged that there's nothing I can do or anyone else can do on this earth that's going to snatch me out of his hand. Oh, oh, you're absolutely secure yeah. in the hands of, of the Lord. When, when we receive Christ, all that was necessary for our salvation will, has been accomplished by him. Yes. And he will complete the, the task he's undertaken. He, he yeah. will finish the work he started in us. Yeah. So yeah. I'm relieved. It, uh, I, I do try to obey him. But it, it's on him to save me. My faith is in him, not my works or not my yes. anything I could add to it. I, I trust him totally and completely with my soul. Yes, and, and that's the encouragement that we find in yeah. God, that yeah. he has all of these promises for us, oh, yeah. um, that he has uh, gone through and blessed us, and um, that we need to take that encouragement that he's mm -hmm. given us like he spoke about in second corinthians 1 3 through 4. Mm -hmm. you know he has mm -hmm. encouraged us through his blessing grace mm -hmm. and that we need to turn right around and share that with other believers and you know I, i've once heard it said well I'm not going to go there, but anyway, Okay. <laughs> but it, it's, it's just, I, I get so excited and encouragement about what God has promised us and I know it to be true. And, you know, he's spoken it in his word mm -hmm. in second Corinthians in Hebrews. He keeps telling us all through the gospels and through the uh, scripture. Um, these are just three passages or four passages mm -hmm. that we picked out, but, um, God wants us to be encouraged, and then yes. he wants us to encourage others. Yes. That's the bottom line. Be encouraged to, to appropriate the, the reality that we will have glorified bodies. We do have eternal life right now. Right. And he'll place us in those glorified bodies at some point in the future. We'll live in an incorruptible kingdom for eternity. Yeah. Uh, separate from... Uh, the sin and all the consequences associated with sin, those will be far removed. Right. So this, this is not just a hypothesis. This is absolute truth. Right. These things. And we base that future truth mm -hmm. on Scripture that we read, yes. which is based off of the Holy Spirit that indwells within us, mm -hmm. that gives us testimony that it's true. Yes. And then how God works in our lives, mm -hmm. and we see it, we can trust it to be true yes. because we see him working in our life. So if we hmm. believe those two principles, mm -hmm. what he says about our future is true. Yes. You I'm, can't call him a liar about one thing no. and not and believe something else. It it mm. just it doesn't make sense. No. We see a long line of witnesses that have preceded us, like right. Noah right. or Abraham or Moses, or um, Isaiah and Jeremiah, you know, the Old Testament prophets. Right. And right on through the New Testament, there's been a, uh, a representation of people who truly, truly believed the biblical message. And we're part of that long line of uh, believers. I keep getting we're a chosen race, a yes. priesthood. Yeah. And I can't think of the scripture reference right off the top of my head, but I can <laughs> see it right now. But we are. We're a chosen race. Yes. Not not the white people or the black race or the yellow race or the green race, but the race that belongs to, to God, that yeah. belong to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We're a chosen race, a priesthood that he has predestined for his yes. will, for his good, to encourage 
us as yes. believers to therefore turn around and encourage others. And uh, you know, I just, I cannot wrap my mind around that sometimes as to, and it's in scripture. He tells us all throughout scripture. So, um, well, I hope today that you are encouraged and that uh, you take this word of encouragement and maybe even think about the perspective of it a little bit differently. Yes. You know, we talk about saying a kind word to somebody to encourage them or, you know, uh, taking an apple to the teacher to encourage them. <laughs> and we need to do those little things. I, you know, those, it's the little things, the hands and feet we are of God yeah. to encourage others. Um, but the, the big encouragement, the one that's everlasting encouragement is knowing that you're a child, that you've been adopted by God and that oh. our salvation is secure in him yes. and that he has saved us uh, for uh, good works, yes. that he has saved us to be uh, glorified one day. Mm -hmm. It's not just about for us. It's about for others to be yeah. used and be a blessing to others. So. Those are the things to focus on right there. Yeah. And as we focus on those, instead of the negative things we see in the world around us, oh, yeah. it brings encouragement because no matter what happens in this world, these promises of God are true and we will enjoy the fulfillment of those promises he's, he's promised. Yeah, and we should feel encouraged <coughs> by him. So anyway, yes. well, thank you for joining us today. And, uh, you know, Richard and I uh, pray that, that this word sinks deeply into your heart because amidst all the confrontation and the adversity and everything going on in the world <laughs> today, uh, we need encouragement. And, you know, we can find it in God's word. And uh, we, we thank you for joining us. And I, I pray that this session has, has encouraged you deeply. The world will do its, uh, its best to discourage, but God's word will bring encouragement. And uh, we challenge you, stay in the word. God bless you.